welcome again everyone in the classes of avs academy of paper 2 of the subject environmental science so in the last class we were discussing the international union for conservation of nature iucn so i have told you that iucn works on mainly works on categorizing the all organisms present all over the earth surface and the iucn categories are depending on how much is the availability of these different organisms whether these are endangered species falling on any endangering category or these are normal species or these are extinct species so according to iucn red list you can see which kind of organisms are near to extinction so iucn categorize all the organisms in nine different categories and we will see all these categories in detail in today's classes in the last class we have already completed the basics of the iucn and we have already seen that the headquarter of this iucn situated in the gland switzerland gland is the city and this situated in the switzerland and where you can find out the headquarter of this iucn the iucn was established in the year of 1948 very first time and it is a knowledge repository for the help of the world conserve nature and ensure sustainable development and this iucn red list was started in the year 1964 the iucn established in the year 1948 but the maintenance of the red book or the red list you can say that was started in the year 1964 and in the year 1980 so they do partnership with the unep united nations environmental program and the world wildlife fund wwf the iucn published a world conservation strategy a document which helped define the concept of sustainable development and save the global conservation and sustainable development agenda so this is the basics of all iucn and in the last class we have also seen what is the sites so sites entered in the force in july 1975 and this was a kind of agreement between 183 parties these parties are the different countries and the integration of the organizations present in those countries this is what this is convention on international trade in endangered species so it ensures that international trade in specimens of the wild animals and the plants does not threaten their survival so we cannot exploit the organisms that much so it is unavailable for the environment or for the ecology so we have to stop that that's why the sites was established the secretariat is administered by the unep that is the united nations environment program and is located in geneva switzerland where the headquarter of unep is also in fact you can say it is also known as the washington convention because very first time this was established or this was discussed in the washington so that's why the convention name is washington convention it's right says legally binding on the parties it means any how the parties all the signed parties 183 parties are bound to follow the rules and regulations that are that are mentioned in the sites report so legally bind means it is not optional they have to follow all the rules regulations and legislations of the sites report then we were discussing traffic in the last class so traffic is the wildlife trade monitoring network so trading trading of the wildlife uh, materials which are coming from the wildlife that can be controlled all over the world it is a leading non governmental organization working on wildlife trade in the context of both biodiversity conservation and the sustainable development it is a joint program of the world wildlife fund and the international union for the conservation of nature iucn and wwf both are maintaining the traffic program established in the year 1976 and it is developed now in a global network you can say it is a research driven and action oriented committed to delivering innovative and practical conservation solutions for the different species headquarter of this traffic is located in cambridge united kingdom this is also important that you have to remember so it is ensuring that trade in the wild plants and animals is not a threat to the conservation of nature or conservation of those different species of plants and animals so this is the main work of traffic organization 
Now coming to the red book or the red data list, whatever you will say, this is maintained by the IUCN, and this list is known as the IUCN red list or red data list. This was started in the year 1964 that we have already seen, and it is the world's most comprehensive inventory or depository, you can say, of the global conservation status of biological species. For example, animal, fungus, and the different plant species. Then it uses a set of quantitative criteria. It means criteria are already defined. So according to those criteria, you have to select the different organisms, plants, maybe maybe animals, to evaluate the extension risk of these species. So if these are very near to extension, so you have to provide them the very severe category of this particular provided categories of the red data list. So if the population is very good and they are not near to extinction, so they would be normal species or not coming under the categories which are in the endangered list. These criteria are relevant to the most species and all regions of the world. So this is not for any one country. This is for the whole world. And the IUCN red list categories define the extinction risk of species assessed that we have already discussed. Discussed, and I have told you that there are total nine categories. Extended in the these particular following uh, categories, any any is not evaluated because there is high abundance of that particular species. Then ex ex for the extinct species, then critically endangered, which are very near to extinction. Endangered is just before the critically endangered. So these are very not near to extinction, but in the upcoming future they can also extinct or they can go to the critically endangered species. Then we have vulnerable species. Also, these all are the different categories. These are considered in the extension list of this red data list or red data book. It is recognized as the most authoritative guide of the status of the biological diversity of different species. Let's look at these different categories in very detail. Here you can see this is containing all the nine categories. One. This is the first one, then we have second, third, fourth, fifth, this is sixth category, seventh category, eighth category, and ninth category. And the very first starting it is with the not evaluated data. It means those are in the very high number of abundance you can find out in the environment. There is no need of evaluation of these species. So these species are not evaluated. Then data deficient, or suppose any species, you are not getting enough data of the criteria which are already enlisted in the red data list or red book. So you will categorize those categories in the data deficient. So further research are required to categorize these categories which are under the data deficient category. Then least concern. So it means the population is now good enough, no requirement of any kind of sustainable development or any kind of rules regulation for the controlling the population of these species which are under the least concern. Near threatened means these can be threatened in the near future. Currently the population is good but the exploitation right now is going on. If it would be continue with the same rate then it can go to the go to the defined more categories in the near future. That is the meaning of near threatened or anti species. Then we have the VU. VU is for the vulnerable. Vulnerable means these are just in the border of the going to the endangered category or going to the threatened category, you can say. So these are the very vulnerable. Vulnerable means which are very near to going to the threatened or endangered category. Then we have the endangered category. Endangered category is the red list of this particular category or the endangered species. The action plan and policies are required to control the exploitation of these different organisms which are enlisted in the category of endangered. So in the endangered category, whatever species are there, the protection is required for these different species. And critically endangered, so it is again one level up from the endangered. So very severe kind of rules and regulation, very serious protection is required for these species which are under the category critically endangered. Then extent in the wild, it means now, the species is not available at all in the wildlife. Whatever species or whatever population is remain, that is under the zoo, maybe, or maybe in non-natural environment or man-made environment to just protect them. But in the wild now, this particular species, which is enlisted in the extent in the wild, is not available at all. This is the meaning of extent in the wild. Then suppose 
no single population no single species of that particular organism is present no single organism is present then of that particular species then particular that category is under the extinct category it means you cannot find a single organism of this particular category these all would be the extinct category so these all are the different categories which are enlisted in the iucn red list or red data list then here the cr category is very important because for the cr category everything is very well protected or very well regulated you can say so how to define that particular species will go to the critically endangered from the endangered category or from the vulnerable category so for that multiple criteria are defined by the iucn and in this particular criteria so if any one of the criteria is fulfilled here then we will say that this particular species will go on the critically endangered list so here are the criteria and listed for the cr status or the critically endangered status of all the organisms which are in this list so the first criteria is that a reduction in the population more than 90% over the last 10 years if suppose the population of that particular species is depleted by or depleted by the 90% value in the past 10 years then we will say this particular species can be categorized under the category critically endangered second criteria says that the population size is less than 50 mature individuals so if the population size is less than 50 then also this particular organism or species will come to the critically endangered status the last criteria says that quantitative analysis shows the probability of extinction in the wild in at at least 50% in the next 10 years it means it is saying that there is a high chances of being extinct in the next 10 years how much are the chances chances are up to 50% there are more than 50% chance that this particular species or the organism will extinct in the upcoming 10 years so any of the criteria is fulfilled then that particular organism or species will come under the critically endangered criteria so this, these are the criteria for the critical endangered status and it is important list very important kind of list all over the globe all over the world to protect these different organisms which are under the category critically endangered so i hope this is clear to you all and this is all about the iucn red list or red data list or this is also called as red book of the iucn